us bow. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come just to say thank you once again. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and for what our ears have heard. Now, Father, we're just asking that you just speak a word unto this place on today. Lord God, speak so magnanimously in this house that we won't leave the same way in which we've come. But we will leave revived, refreshed, and renewed by the blood of Jesus. Father, send a rhema word, a unique word that's going to change someone's heart. That's going to cause them to look at you in such a great way that it will cause them to cry out like the jailer did and ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Father, we love you on today. We praise you and we magnify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen, amen. Family, we have been in the book of Luke, amen, for the last few Sundays, and it has really given us some great enlightenment as Jesus was having conversation with his disciples. It's in the book of Luke in that sixth chapter, beloved, that we find Jesus having conversations around the Sabbath, having conversations around expectations, having conversations around why we should be careful in our judgment towards others. Amen, somebody. And then on today, beloved, we're going to pick up in the sixth chapter in the book of Luke, beginning at verses number 43 through 45. If you can just stand for the reading and the hearing, of God's holy word. Amen. Y'all wake up. Amen. 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 I'm not even concerned about it today. Amen. Amen. Just preach and let God get the glory. Amen. Amen. Luke 6 chapter. Watch it, Chris. Verses 43 through 45. Amen. When you find it, please signify by saying amen. For the word of the Lord says it this way, for there is no good tree that bears bad fruit, nor on the other hand, a bad tree that bears good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit, for people do not gather figs from thorns, oh my God, nor do they pick grapes from a briar bush. The good person out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth what is good. And the evil person out of the evil treasure brings forth what is evil. For his mouth speaks from that which fills the heart. Beloved, I want to talk to you for a very few moments from this subject. Good fruit. Good fruit. Good fruit. I remember I'm, I'm Cleveland born, Southern raised. And oftentimes, one of my favorite times of year was being able to go out, Sister Rose, into the watermelon patch that we had down in Mississippi, going down into the patch and had the honor of being able to pick the watermelon of the day. And, and, and there were some things that you had to learn about not only the patch, but you had to learn about the watermelon itself. There was places in the patch that were deemed as very muddy, and it, it seems as if though the watermelons that grew in that particular part of the patch seemed to be a little bit soggier than the others. So you were often told, even in the midst of summer, to find the watermelons in the patch that had come from a more sturdier type of earthier ground. And so I would find myself making my way wandering, beloved, through the patch only to find 
uh, the watermelon that seemed to grasp my eye. Now, I don't know about you, and I can't speak for you or your love of fruit, but to me, a good watermelon was about yay big, and it was about so round. And the only way that you can tell if the fruit was good from the outside was to thump it on the outside, on the inside. And, and, and you could tell if the inside was good by thumping it on the outside because there would be a hollowness that you would hear when you would thump the watermelon. And so and so, beloved, I had the opportunity, uh, Pastor Lucky, to thump my way through the watermelon patch as I was seeking and, and I sought out uh, some good fruit. And beloved, once I... Uh, 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 heard that sound that I was looking for, then I would take that watermelon, uh, Sister Harris, that was yay big and yay round, and i take it on back to the house, and that would be a part of our dessert portion. That was just some good fruit. Good fruit, good fruit. There, there's something about good fruit. If there's good fruit, then there's bad fruit. There was times in which the thumping theologians uh, didn't understand that even a good thumped watermelon didn't always produce good fruit. Family, there is so much that Jesus unpacks in this sixth chapter of the book according to Luke from Jesus healing on the Sabbath to Jesus choosing the 12 disciples from the Beatitudes to having love for your enemies, not judging others, leading to our thought today, the tree and the fruit that it bears. The Bible says for there is no tree that bears good fruit. That little word for uh, is a term of explanation. The point of the passage is that one should be self-corrective and be careful of who one follows. You got to be self-corrective and you got to be careful of whom you follow. Because such choices also reflect what the nature of the tree is and of the product that it produces. So if you're not careful in being self-corrective to yourself, meaning getting yourself together, and then you're following the wrong people, there's a possibility that your good fruit could go bad. I ain't talking about nothing but good fruit. Brock Box says it this way. Uh, Jesus now explains why being self-critical and self-correcting is important. The fruit that a teacher produces reflects what is at the core of his or her being. Deacon Harris either is good fruit, uh, and we get that Greek word, which is called kalon, K-A-L-O-N, or produces bad fruit, uh, Tony, and that's sapron, S-A-P-R-O-N. And in other words, removing the bean from your own eye uh, because it is a serious defect showing you that you are not bearing good fruit. Removing the bean uh, from your own eye means that you are at a place in life where you understand, Sherry, the importance of self-correction. Yes, yes. I can't look at your speck while I got this beam in my own eye. Right, right. Good fruit. Uh, four in this context makes very excellent sense. The connection is close. Jesus is, as he were saying, remove that beam of self-righteousness, for it is a very serious defect showing that you are a spiritually sick person. Family, when you can spend more time worrying about somebody's speck and you don't focus on your being, you are spiritually sick. And there comes a time when you have to understand that understanding the importance of self-correction is way more important than trying to diagnose someone else's sickness. I'm going to preach in a minute. Y'all just give me time. Uh, good fruit shows that the tree from which it came is healthy. Bad fruit indicates that the tree from which it came fell ill or sickly. Every tree, the term here, tree, is used to include even what we know as shrubs. Family, I live in a community where you have to have two trees in your yard. It is a part of our HOA, our um, whatever you call them, our housing authority. It's, it's, it's a part of the deal. Uh, that every single family mama has to at least plant two trees in their yard. 
The reason we have to do that is because the name of the subdivision in which we live is called Bradford Oaks. And there is some type of history, and I didn't go into research, I just did what the folk told me to do, uh, because it ain't so many of us living out there, and I ain't trying to be the one that's getting ushered out. Amen, somebody. Uh, uh, but, but, they, but they said, uh, Dwayne, living here, everyone in the yard has two trees. And, and, and so it's up to you. You get a chance to decide what kind of trees you want to plant, so that's the blessing. But here's what happens. Every single year, as the trees go through the season, uh, Pastor Lucky, uh, the leaves start to change colors. Uh, they start to change sometimes deformities, if there are any. And we're responsible for making sure uh, that the trees in our yard are properly groomed and taken care of. But family, how many of you know uh, that the seasons as they change uh, can cause a difference in the way that the tree begins to look? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm talking to you. Uh, uh, somebody say seasons will change. And so the seasons, beloved, the seasons, the natural winter, spring, summer, fall, uh, and oftentimes they will dictate the appearance of the tree. Uh, what are you saying, Pastor? That sometimes in life, the reason why people are acting the way they're acting is because they're just going through different seasons of their lives. It, it doesn't matter that there's something wrong with them. It doesn't mean that they're good, bad, or indifferent. They're just in a different season in their life, and so they tree don't look the same as it did last year. Um, there's times in which, uh, in which the housing authority will ride past and they're looking at the trees in your yard. And the reason they're looking, Brenda, is because they need to make sure that there's no broken limbs on the tree. Um, here's why. Because we have such high winds in our area because we live in a rural part of town. And if you're not careful, uh, the broken limbs from your tree uh, could damage somebody else's property. Uh, so they come out and they inspect the tree to see if it's healthy or if there's a possibility that there's some things that's dying on the tree. Oh, my God. So, beloved, I have to make sure not only do I have to have two trees in my yard, but I got to make sure that the two trees in my yard are healthy trees uh, in my yard. And, and what I found out is that uh, depending on what time of year or uh, whatever the season, how harsh the winter may have been, uh, the snow or the weight, uh, the weight of the season can often break the limb that's on the tree. And then it's my responsibility, oh my God, to make sure that I cut this branch off the tree so that the branch won't damage somebody else's property. Uh, beloved, what are you saying is that sometimes if we're not careful, uh, then the seasons as they change begin to break us in ways that we never knew we was even broken once before and then what happens with broken people broken people begin to damage others because their situation is broken their life is broken uh, their days are broken and so we got to be mindful that we have a pruner by the name of Jesus who will cut away your distractions he'll cut away those broken areas in your life but don't want them to happen too soon because the more broken you are the more better you become see when you cut the broken branches off the tree when the season changes then the tree begins to grow a little bit better and a little bit healthier and I've come to tell you that when I come from out of my broken seasons uh, I'm wiser than I was before I'm better than I was before I'm stronger than I was before but it took a broken season in order for me to appreciate the seasons of my life. Tell your neighbor I'm okay with my broken limbs in my broken season. Ah. Oh, for those of you who have gone through some stuff, you know that all you had to do was wait on the season to change because when the season changed, I got an opportunity to grow just a little bit better next time. Jesus, the wise pruner, he cuts off and extracts that from the tree that does not belong. You ever looked up and a vital part of your organization or a vital part of your kinship or a vital part of your friendship has now been extracted? Yeah. 
Luke 6, 43 through 44 is another agricultural illusion by Jesus, one by which he knew everyone could understand. And he would apply this agricultural metaphor to human character and conduct. Walter Leefield says it best this way, Reverend Harris. He points out the thought of Luke 6 and 40, and he continues to say it like this. Like teacher, like student. Like tree, like fruit. Like teacher, like student. Like tree, like fruit. Whatever the teacher does, the student gonna do. Whatever the tree does is the fruit it produce. This is why we as kids, oh my God, this is why we as parents have to make sure uh, that we're living according to the word, the will, and the way of God. Because if we're not careful, even a good intended tree can produce bad fruit if it's not careful. Oh, you're saying, Pastor, that's going against the allegorical theme of the text, but no, it's not. No, it's not. I know a lot of good parents that didn't spend time with their children. And because they didn't spend time with their children, even though they came from good fruit, uh, a good tree, they turned out to be not so good fruit. Why? Because there was not enough time in that period in which there should have been conversations dealing with life as it is today. Sometimes good trees can produce bad fruits for a season. I had to add that disclaimer for a season because I need you to understand that even though you may have come from a bad tree and you're not such good fruit for a season, it doesn't mean it has to stay that way because trouble don't last always and it don't matter what my tree looks like if God is the pruner and he's the... Let me get to that. I'm going to get to that. The fruit produced, watch this. There is no good tree which produces bad fruit, nor on the other hand, a bad tree which produces good fruit. Uh, the fruit produced by a tree gives clear evidence of the health of the tree. Warren Wiersbe says it this way. He observed the illustration of the tree, and it reminds us that fruit is always true to character. An apple tree produces apple, <laughs> not oranges. And a good person produces good fruit, uh, not evil. There comes a time, and I remember Evangelist T used to talk to me about this. He say, Pastor, they audio and they video uh, just don't line up together. And so, family, at some point, oh my God, at some point, that which you are is going to be that which you produce. Mm, oh. It makes you think about your life. It makes you think about your decision. And what you got to ask yourself is what I'm producing. Is it something that the world really needs to have replicated? Damn. See, I ain't talking about just children. I'm talking about your actions. Is this something that Jesus really wants produce? Me cussing people out. Is this really what Jesus won't produce? Me lying on folk, is this really the fruit that he wants me to produce? Me not being dependable, is this the fruit that Jesus really wants me to produce? Ooh, do I really want to replicate what I've become? Do the world really need another me? Oh, but it ain't so negative because there's some good fruit sitting in this church today. There's some good trees that has released some good fruit. And if you know that you a good tree and you release some good fruit, then you go ahead and shout hallelujah in this place. Uh, uh, you know that everywhere you go becomes better because you're there. Conversations become better because you're there. People just turn out better, not bitter, because you there. If you producing good fruit, then you go ahead and say thank you, Jesus, uh, for some good fruit. I know I got some good fruit right here. I got some good fruit at home. I got some good fruit in here. You know why? Because I spent enough time with the master to know how to cultivate my land. But here's the thing. Believers do sin. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Y'all remember that? 
Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> believers do sin. Tell your neighbor, believers, believers. do, do. Sin. sin. Now point to yourself <laughs> and say, believers, believers. Do, do sin. But the witness of their words and the works is consistently good to the glory of God. You're just a work in progress. That's all you are. Huh? We all mess up, but it don't mean that we're not good fruit. It just means we in a tainted season. <laughs> Y'all will catch that later. Watch this. Watch this. Let me, let me say it this way. Believers do sin, but the witness of their words and works is consistently good to the glory of God in terms of ministry. Servants of God who are faithful will reproduce themselves and people who are in turn true to the Lord. Chris, when you know you're doing what's right, you're acting right, you're praying right, guess what? You want to reproduce some Chris's just like you. That's called discipleship. You, you may not be birthing them out of your canal, but you're birthing them through discipleship. Sister Rose, you're discipling that whole row right there. You know what you're doing? You're helping to birth some good fruit. And guess what? The tree limbs in the tree is sitting right behind you. But as a community, guess what y'all doing together? Y'all producing some good fruit. I wish I had a church in here. In this parable, the bad trees are false teachers, as Matthew's parallel account uh, makes clear in Matthew 7 and 15. The Lord warned, beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but neither are inwardly ravenous wolves. Then in verse 16, he uses the same illustration recorded by Luke. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes nor figs from thistles, are they? Thus connecting it to the false teachers of verse number 15. Watch this. How do fruit trees relate to humans? Watch this. What is on the outside is determined by what is on the inside. Oh. Oh. Let me say it again. What is on the outside is determined by what is on the inside. Another responsibility that I had as I was able to make my way through the watermelon patch was to make my rounds through the plum tree. Man, I don't know, there was something about plums deep, boy. Boy, you mess around and boy, you mess around. That's, that's my southern voice, right? Boy, you mess around and get some good plums. Chris, you two city, man, you don't know nothing about good plums. But listen, there's nothing like, Mike, you know, there was nothing like uh, Jay getting a nice, uh, voluptuous, uh, juicy, uh, wait, what am I talking about? Oh, oh, wait, wait, there, there, there was nothing on time, finally, finally. Let Jesus lead. So, there, 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 thank you, thank you. There, there, there's nothing like a nice, juicy plum. Um, um, and man, that's right and in this season. And, and you're getting ready to take a nice bite of it. But before you bite the fruit, you got to inspect it first. See, see that you have to check the dexterity of the fruit. You have to make sure uh, that the skin on the fruit is consistent. And so in the midst of moving it around to make sure that it's good after I've wiped it off on my shirt, if there's nothing uh, that's changing the dexterity of the skin and all the skin is the same color, then I know that it's some good fruit prepared to eat. But there was sometimes that this nice uh, plum, which should have been a more of a, a greenish, uh, brownish, bluish type color, uh, 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 it had some dark brown spot in it. And, and, and I said, wait a minute, what? Because I was too young to understand, Freddie, what this dark uh, brown spot meant. And, and, and I said, Mom, is this something that I should eat? And she said, son, when you see a nice, voluptuous, juicy, plump, 
plum uh, that should be more uh, reddish and purplish in color, but you see a brown spot in it with a little hole, that means that there's something wrong with the fruit. Uh, uh, she said, what you got to do is you got to make sure you dig around and look inside. And family, when I dug around, uh, uh, Britt, I saw a worm. <laughs> oh, my God, was in the inside of the fruit. And, and this little nasty maggot worm had turned this nice, juicy, voluptuous plum into something that was not even edible because what was on the inside was solely messing up the outside. And I hate to say it, but there are some believers sitting in here today uh, that got a nasty spirit, uh, uh, that got a nasty mouth, that got a nasty uh, attitude, and you're turning what could have been juicy and voluptuous and nice and appealing to the kingdom of God, and now you messed up from the inside out. Oh, my God. Just like you have to be authentic. Plums don't come from thorn bushes. So first you have to be the right kind of tree. We need transformation before we can do reformation. Spiritually speaking, God is not expecting bad people to start doing good things because they can't. I don't care how good you think you are or how bad you might be. If you're a bad person, you can't do good things. Not until you accept Jesus as your personal Savior. And you have the Holy Spirit taking up residence in you. You must be born again. Somebody wake up and say born again. Born again. One thing many people don't get about the Bible is that the Bible is not primarily a moral manual. It's really not. It's a guide that points us to Christ. Jesus wants people who will be committed to him and let him transform them through the spirit. So my question to you is, are you a Christian or are you just religious? Are you a Christian or are you just religious? Man, I didn't realize I was this boring that like 80% of the church be asleep. I didn't realize. <laughs> I'll speed it up so I can go. Similarly, in Matthew 12 and 33, Jesus said to the Pharisees, either make the tree good and its fruit good or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. Make it, make it your choice. For the tree is known by a fruit. Then in the next verse, he applied that statement to them. You brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak what is good? For the mouth speaks out of which fills the heart. A lot of people can't speak good because their heart is so bad. Jesus gives another illustration to show that we must examine the fruit that comes from our lives. Such fruit reveals our hearts because we produce according to who and what we are. Would you want to reproduce yourself? Our words reveal that what fills our heart, we must judge our own sins down to the heart level. Jesus points it out, and it's very obvious. A tree produces after its nature. The fruit primarily refers to our words, which reveal what fills our heart. Whatever comes out of your mouth, you can believe it. That's what's filling your heart. And you can sit here and make excuses. You can make excuses. I'm having a bad day. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. But I can guarantee you what comes out of your mouth is what's flowing in your heart at that time. What is inside comes out of our mouths. If you are often spewing out angry, bitter words that tear down others, that blame them for all of your problems, then your heart is not right before God. Jesus is not teaching here that some people are inherently good while others are not. The only ways you can get a good heart is to be born again through the power of God's spirit. And once you are born again, it is not automatic to live by the new man or heart. But I can tell you one thing, that the struggle becomes just a little bit easier because you know that your destination is going to be heaven and you're not going to hell. It doesn't mean that it's going to be an easy journey. But guess what? What you do with God today determines what he's going to do with you on tomorrow. And so you got to be mindful of the fruit in which you're bearing. Jesus points out the fruit is always a true reflection of one's character. 
the fruit of each tree reveals its actual character. It is the final test before we leave from this place and go to our destinations. Can I get ready to close here? The good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth what is good. And the evil man out of the evil treasures bring forth what is evil. Two types of people are dramatically contrasted here. The heart of the issue is the state of the heart which determines what issues form in the mouth. Whether it be good or bad. Jesus' half-brother said this in James 3 and 11. He alluded to this when he asked a rhetorical question. Does a fountain send out from the same opening both fresh water and bitter water? Can it? Has it? See, this is when people, this is when people get a chance to assess you. Because the longer you spend with somebody, I don't care how much of an act they put up. The longer you spend with somebody, uh, it's the, just going to be a matter of time before who they truly are comes out. This is why, this is why I tell people all the time to make sure that you have a long engagement because you need to see every side of this person before you say, I do. You need to see them happy. You need to see them sad. You need to see them bitter. You need to see them upset. You need to see them with the full cup and you need to see them with the empty cup because you got to spend enough time with the person and it's just a matter of time before their true character is going to come out. A lot of folk have put up a very big facade for a long time, but I guarantee you, you'll be able to look at the dexterity of their skin, and you can tell if there's a worm on the inside. You stay around somebody long enough, they're going to let you know who they truly are, and they're going to let you know how they truly feel about you. Man. What kind of tree am I? What kind of fruit have I produced? When people interact with me, have they become better? Or are they now bitter? nothing worse than biting into something that you thought was going to be sweet. Looked good. Felt good. Juicy. Voluptuous. And after one bite, it was sour to the taste. Am I describing someone else? Or am I describing me? Father, we thank you. Lord God, we thank you for this season. We thank you because, God, we understand that a good tree produces good fruit. A bad tree produces bad fruit. But, Father, we do understand that we all sin and have come short of your glory. So, Father, in this season, as you are purging us, as you are pruning us, preparing us for a hearty season to come, Lord God, don't take your masterful hands off of us. Leaves fall, branches break. But the foundation still stays. Blessed is the man that walketh not. Oh my God. I'm reminded of that Psalms 1. We understand.
understand that the closer we get to the wall, the more firm our foundation becomes. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Oh my God. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And guess what? In his law does he meditate both day and night. Oh my God, and he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that giveth forth fruit in his season. And his leaf also shall not wither. For whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. But beloved, but the ungodly are not so, but are like a chaff with the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment of the sinners and the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. Father, we want to be good fruit. Because we know we come from the great tree of life. You who are the master pruner, cut pricks and prunes for your service for your healing and for your power we love you today in Jesus name we pray amen